Hi guys, um, had uh, a few emails uh, about uh, people, well, from people having problems with the Dean circuits. Um, what can I say? The problems are wide and varied. Um, so I thought I'd do a video on how to diagnose problems with Houdini circuits. Um, first question that I always get asked is, do I need expensive pieces of kit? The answer is no. Um, I'm going to show you what you need, um, but above all else, you need common sense. So, <clears throat> okay, forgive the camera layout, um, I've stuck my web camera on top of my monitor looking down onto my uh, desk. So, this here is a multimeter, it's a cheap one, um, in the UK you can pick them up from between sort of 10 and 20 pound, um, they're quite simple and basic really. Um, that's the majority of what you need. Okay, so the first step is you don't actually need a multimeter. So anyone that doesn't have one, uh, follow these steps first. Okay, I'll just position this. You can probably identify this, it's uh, a potentiometer. Right, nice and simple one. This is one I actually got with a um, as a control sort of knob for a fan so it can um, reduce the noise that your PC makes. Anyway, pretty much uh, bog standard, I've just wrapped the wire up. Two ends like that. Now these things, um, you turn them one way, Let's see if you can see this or not. No, oh well. There is a black mark on there, just there by my finger. Basically, it goes from there, sort of round, probably about three quarters of a turn. This one does. Uh, obviously, different units vary. Um, if you turn it to one side, right, you'll either have um, maximum resistance or minimum resistance. So, first thing you should do. Is try running your Bedini with the resistor set all the way to one side and then run it set all the way to the other side. Okay, um, if you've got a multimeter, as I have here, and set it to resistance, if you stick your multimeter across the wires, like so. Right, you can see the value on my multimeter. Apologies, it is upside down. So, uh, just for illustration purposes, you can see that says uh, 2.5 ohms. That's it set to its minimum. If I turn it up, I, I've only turned it up a bit, and that's gone to 35 ohms. 120, 130 ohms, and so on. This one goes up to 10 and a half kilo ohms. All right, so with it set to its minimum, okay, um, that's how you should start the Bedini. So, here's one I have here. It runs. Apologies that you can't see it turn. Um, okay, so. It quite hap happily runs, no problem. So I just stuck it here for uh, illustration purposes. Here, I have two lots of the Bedini circuit. Um, the differences with mine is that I just have um, a static resistor, uh, 150 ohm static resistor. Um, simple reason being that uh, well, these uh, Bedini fans, you know, the PC fans that you get, um, they seem to function best between 150 ohms and 300 ohms. So if you use the potentiometer that goes up to 10 kilo ohms, 
I only have to turn a small amount to be out of range and of course then it'll stop so um, basically what I've done quite simply is using my potentiometer here I found um, the resistance that was best for my Bedini fans and then found a uh, static resistor um, to take its place no need to have potentiometers all around but then again I'm I'm building multiple Bedini circuits so for me that's a better way of doing it um, but for everyone else that's just built a Bedini to uh, to do whatever it with really um, you probably are be better off using a potentiometer okie doke so you set your potentiometer to one side, you set it to the other side, still not working. Right. Okay. On each Bedini, uh, uh, there are four wires that come out. Let me feed mine up. There are mine. They're twisted together. It makes it easy. Right, okay. You'll have one pair for the trigger coil and one pair for the um, um, the firing coil. Okay. Now, if you flick the Bedini and it stops, um, there can be m multiple reasons for it. First one is you'll have a pair of wires for the trigger coil. Right. First thing is swap them over. Right. Um, sometimes the uh, the polarity for the um, um, <coughs> the polarity going into your uh, transistor is the wrong way around. So swap them over, try that. Right. If you are getting um, some sort of firing from it right the next thing to try is to swap over the wires for your power coil uh, that's not your trigger coil your power coil it's the one with the thicker wires on it right um, if you've got that the wrong way around um, then that will be trying to, trying to attract the magnet instead of push it away okay so you'll have extreme amount of reduced power so yes, basically it's more powerful for it to push a magnet away than to try and attract it. Okay, so you've done those two tips and your Bedini is still not firing. Right, this is where you're going to need to start using multimeters. Right. First of all, check your battery voltage. Right. The standard Bedini circuit runs off 12 volt battery. That's a lead acid battery. So check um, basically your battery levels above 11 and a half volts. That is your primary battery. Right. If that's okay, uh, provided well, if you're running large Bedinis, um, then basically disconnect your um, secondary battery, the one that's been charged, and try it again. Um, sometimes an extremely low um, secondary battery can stop the Bedini dead in its tracks and stop it from turning over. Okay, so try that. 